We're here at the lunch uh, venue uh, after a wonderful morning of fishing. Uh, no rain today as compared to uh, yesterday. If we have a guest, please introduce yourself. I'm Anne Berry. I'm a partner at Cornell Capital. And I had the pleasure of meeting David Kotok, Camp Kotok's founder, on the set of Yahoo Finance while we were doing an hour-long panel together. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> what kind of issues are you most concerned about at this point in time? Well, there are a couple coming from the private equity lens, so that's where I spend my time. It's buying businesses, um, putting a modest amount of leverage on them, and then helping them to grow over time, both in the US and internationally. And in this specific environment, we're very focused on two big topics. One is trade, mm -hmm. uh, and what that means from a global perspective. Sure. And the other is US domestic growth, and how do we think about the outlook in the next couple of years. What impacts has the US policy, as far as trade, had? Uh, when it comes to business uncertainty, uh, are, are people pulling back yeah. and hesitating at this juncture because they're just uh, uncertain? So far it's been a bit of a conundrum. I think we've seen a bit of a tale of two uh, sets of sentiment. So on the one hand, I spend a lot of my time in the consumer sector. And we've seen consumer spending be very robust, irrespective of what's really been going on from a trade perspective, at least up until this point. Uh, we saw that in the recent in the recent GDP numbers. On the other hand, I also spend a lot of my time in manufacturing. As we look at supply chains, as we look at business investment, at a macro level, the data has shown there's been a slowdown, and business uncertainty has made it harder for people to take long time. Is investment. is some of this slowdown due to the fact that supply chains are shifting, and therefore it takes a while to actually get the new production in place, or is it just wait and see? I think it's more the latter. I think it's less that there's been a lot of shifting so far because the cost of doing that sure. is material. I think Apple came out and said it would take them three years just to move 15% of their supply chain. That's one very interesting data point. Oh. Um, so it's the time and cost, so I think it's much more wait and see. And as we look at how the trade policy has been executed upon, um, it's been hard to predict. Sure. It's difficult to know what's coming next, so there's a little bit of waiting. Right. Uh, you mentioned the consumer sector. Are you speaking U.S. consumer mm -hmm. at this point as opposed to international consumer? It's been predominantly the U.S. sector, uh, the U.S. consumer sector I've been spending my time on. And you've seen um, within the consumer sector there are certain uh, secular trends, certain thematics I spend a lot of my time on. A clean organic consumption, for example, being a key theme. But at a bigger level, new consumer spending, as I said, has been very robust. And I think sure. recent rate cuts will support that. What about Europe? Uh, are, is, is Brexit having an uh, <laughs> obvious impact? Uh, is that something that you focus on at all? It's something I focus on, but much more driven by, you know, my accent hails from London, so it's I much understand. more a, a, a personal passion, much more than it is, frankly, with where you know, okay. we spend our time really in the US. Yeah. But you can't get away from the fact that Brexit has been a talking point. Jay Powell talked about Brexit sure. as a source sure. of uncertainty. Uh, the EU has a changing of the guard right now in its leadership with Christian, Christian Lagarde and mm -hmm. Ursula von der Leyen. So Brexit's top of my mind as I think about what does um, shocking change or a shocking exit mean mm -hmm. for EU growth and how that has repercussions. There's a lot of concern that maybe there'll be uh, a broken exit in the mm. sense of uh, no deal. Yeah. Is, is that high probability at this point? Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I think it, that is sort of out of the realm of rational economic projection at this point. I think if you were to read the British press and you were to look at the sentiment regionally, mm -hmm. it's very interesting when you peel back the Brexit vote, Scotland doesn't want to leave the EU. Um, Ireland, Northern Ireland has, has very mixed feelings. England and Wales, and even within that region, with huge mm. differences. Huge differences by age, 70% of 18 to 24 year olds voted to stay. So there is actually, on the one hand, deep commitment. We saw that in the referendum mm -hmm. result to having a Brexit. Mm -hmm. But on the other, there is enough uh, division within the UK electorate that I think the risk of a general election come the fall, before the Halloween deadline, is actually very real. So you may not, may not see it happening with quite such a smooth exit. Coming back to the US and the consumer for a minute. Um, what impact does all the changes in retail have on consumer and consumer demand? Are you seeing consumer spending concentrated in particular areas, uh, expanding or contracting in particular areas? 
It's interesting. It's the where the consumer is spending money has been the real change, as opposed to seeing any slowdown in the overall size of the pie. So if you look at the number of store closures for physical retail, I think it's at record levels, at least through July sure. of 2019. Right. Right. And that shift to online and to e-commerce continues to be very transformational. I think if you peel back, Amazon has a large amount of share, sure. but the Walmarts, the Targets, sure. the Ultras, somewhat belatedly, but nevertheless are getting there, figuring out a strategy to try and win some of that share back. Well, it's going to be an interesting time, uh, for sure, <laughs> yeah. going forward. Really appreciate your insights, and thank you very much. Thanks for having me, right. and what an amazing, amazing event. Isn't thank it you. though? Beautiful. Wonderful.